This is the third of the first lecture, third, third part. Uh, and what I want to talk about in this last piece is sort of what is perhaps the most common and uh, one of the easiest, actually, maybe not the most common, uh, algorithms out there, uh, very much like the k-means. Uh, it's extremely simple to think about and implement. And so we're going to use it here. And it's called k and n or k nearest neighbors. Now, it's very much like the k-means algorithm. What k-means did, remember, is built two clusters about basically who's closest to who. You ask, you ask which center of mass point am I closest to, that's the one I belong to. K nearest neighbors is very similar, but it's different. It's a supervised learning algorithm, which means you're providing it with labeled data. So I might provide it with a set of labeled data. And so maybe what we can demonstrate here is this concept on a little toy example. And then we'll go over to MATLAB, show you how it's, how it's done, OK? So the toy example I want to consider uh, Gonna, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and oops, pop that down there. And I'm going to go back to the drawing here. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to erase what I had. And we're going to draw some stuff here. We're going to go back to the simple example of thinking about squares and circles and how to classify them. But now, notice, even by me drawing them as squares and circles, I've, eventually, I've essentially labeled them myself. Right? I said, here's circles. Here's squares, so I'm using expert and loop knowledge. I've labeled them, so it's already a supervised type of algorithm. So what I want to do is take this example, and let's go ahead and look at something like, uh, let's go ahead and put some green squares down again. OK. I will do that a little bit more. I'm also going to do some orange here, let's say, uh, orange uh, marker like that. So I have some orange circles. OK, so suppose this is my data. And what you've already seen, I've labeled them. I've labeled them as green squares or in circles. So what the k-nearest neighbors does is it says, hey, look, that's my training. I've given you this information. There's a new point that I want to give to you, a new piece of data. And your job is to label it one of these things. Is it an orange circle or is it a green square? OK, that's the objective. And what we're going to try to do is see those objectives through. So the way the k uh, nearest neighbor works. It just says, okay, let's go ahead and take a point. Let's pick a point right here. I'm going to make it a triangle. So very much like k-means, what it does is starts looking at distances to points. And so the k nearest neighbors, the k now represents the number of neighbors. So generically, if you don't do anything in MATLAB, the KNN search algorithm, which is what it's called, we'll just look at who's next to me. Whoever's closest to me, that's what I'm going to label myself. So for instance, in this case here, you could say this guy is closest to that point. And if you say, what's that piece of data, the k nearest neighbors would just say, OK, of all the data points available, since I'm closest to that, I will say that I am an orange circle. OK? Let's take another point, and maybe a point here. OK, kind of more interesting. So now you have this distance there, you have this distance there, this distance there, and this distance there. OK, so now this is like playing bocce ball because you're trying to, with your eyeball, tell who's, who's closest to who. I would say that this is maybe the winner. Uh, but, you know, so if that's the winner, you would say that this point is also, uh, again, a, uh, 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 an orange ball. Okay, so that's how you do this labeling. Okay, that's if you're using one nearest neighbor. Now let's take a more interesting case, which is what if I had instead of this point, I had a piece of data right here. Now, in this case, it's kind of interesting because your nearest point is clearly right there. You could say I'm going to label that a green square, but you notice that I have a neighbor right here. I also have a neighbor here, and I have a neighbor here all that are orange. 
So what Cade Nearest Neighbor does is says, wait a minute, how about you do the following? This algorithm can work, but I can choose the K. In other words, I can say, I'm going to choose the K nearest neighbors. So suppose I'm going to choose the three nearest neighbors. And what I'm going to do is have those nearest neighbors vote. Of course, you always pick an odd number or else you can get a tie. But for instance here, I could say, I'm going to take the three nearest neighbors and whatever they vote for, that's what the point is going to be. So for instance here, you'd say, well, the nearest neighbor is a green box. Okay, but I'm not going to just listen to that point because otherwise I would be a green box. I'm going to say, who are the next other two that are the closest? Well, I have the green box and two orange balls. So I have two votes for a ball, one vote for a box. I will become a ball because I have the vote is in favor of the ball. So that's the idea is that you can have this uh, nearest neighbors making these decisions for you, not just one, but two, but three, five. Again, you don't want to pick an even number because maybe if you get a tie, then you have to make some decisions there. And then even points like over here, you could say, well, a point here, I have a point here. You know, if I use my three nearest neighbors, I would use this one, I'd use this one, and I'd use this one. And then I would say, okay, that is clearly a square. Right, so I, I weight my vote with three, okay? So that's how this thing works. Pretty simple, very simple. I give you, in the supervision, I give you green squares, orange circles. Your job, is if I give you a new, if, if someone gives you new data, is to say, is it a green square, orange circle? And all you gotta do is for a new piece of data, simply calculate the distance to my neighboring points, the k nearest neighbors, and you're done. Okay, that's. That's the concept that we want to uh, convey here. All right, and the distance again, really standard metrics, right? So this, is, this goes back to junior high and Pythagorean theorem, right? This is like just simply saying that distance, right, is the delta x squared plus delta y squared square root, okay? That's how you calculate distances. It's very simple. And if it's in higher dimensional space, then this distance becomes you know, delta x1 squared plus delta x2 squared squared, okay? So that's the idea, all right? So simple concepts, distances, that's how you do KNN search. It's also how you do k-means, right? You just compute distances between everybody. And then from that alone, you're able to make these uh, in the one case with k-means, you're making a clustering decision. In this case here, you're making a classification decision. Here's the other thing I want to point out that is maybe not so obvious, but it will become important as we go along, which is normally when you do these data reductions, you know, I've sort of looked at clusters and you sort of draw a line over there is one type, over here is another type. The KNN search, uh, it's not clear that's what it does for you. Okay, so if I start to think about this, I can start seeing that right away, so first of all, KNN search is not going to draw lines between my data sets, between my data points, or between some kind of separation plane. What it's going to do is you're going to, it can actually follow curved lines through your data. So let's actually try, if we can, to draw what the surface of separation that would be. So here, you know, if you're a point here, then your nearest points are this one, this one, and this one. So you're kind of a, of, a, of a green square. But if you go over a little bit, now this point becomes closer than this. So this is probably some line that's going to go sort of like through here, through here. You're still going to get votes. And you see what's going to happen is your separation line is going to be, actually, sorry, now that you have this guy down here, right, you're going to be able to something like this. So KNN search is capable of generating nonlinear separation curves through your data. Okay? And it's all based upon your training set that you give it. And so this is also important that when you think about your training set and you think about that curve, we talked about the concept of cross-validation. It could be that that curve is completely overfit. The thing it fits is the very specific data you gave it. But what you want to understand is, 
if I do many trials of the data, random draws, how much does that curve change? And curves like this tend to change a lot often because these kind of very complicated curves are typically just generated by overfitting of the data. Okay, so really important to do some kind of task afterwards, which is a uh, task in which you are going to evaluate this by doing cross validation. Okay, never forget to do the cross validation. It's, a, it's extremely important. Always, always, always do cross validation. Okay, so this is the simple example. Now let's go to the MATLAB code. Let's look at some real data. Well, okay, manufactured data that we would construct, and then talk about what the KNN search would do. Okay, so I'm going to take this down here and go back to my desktop, pull in the data. Now what I'm going to do here is, uh, so pull in the data we started with, which is going to be these black and white uh, dots that we had from the last example we did. Okay, so let me pull these over here, run that. I think I ran it. Okay, what's, oh, I see, hold on, hold on, let's just get rid of this for a moment. Uh, yep, total. Okay, here's my data. And this data, what I want to think about doing with it, again, is I want to separate it. And suppose this is my training. So remember, in this case here, where you're actually doing a supervised algorithm, then your data is going to come in the form of already pre-trained data. So in other words, I've labeled these black, I labeled these reds. And in this case, it's pretty easy to do a Kate nearest neighbors, right? Kate nearest neighbors is going to say, you give me a new point, let's say here, and all I got to do is say, who are the neighbors of that point right there? Well, I'm surrounded by black. So I'm going to be a black point. Down here, I'd be in red point. Somewhere in between, more complicated. Okay, so let's actually bring some more of this data together. I'm going to basically bring this back down to what we started with last time. And this becomes kind of more interesting. And this is where you can start seeing that supervised algorithms have to make choices. And they're going to get some of them wrong. They're going to label some of them wrong, partly because statistically, some of your data is indistinguishable, or some of the data its statistical outliers look like they belong in the other set of data. So for instance, take this red point right here. Okay, So it's here. Now if you do uh, k equals 3 for the nearest neighbors, if you have a new point anywhere around here and you're doing k equals 3, the red's only voting once versus two black points. So, but if you do one nearest neighbor, you could put a new point up here closest to that red and it would be labeled a red, even though clearly it's in a sea of black. That's why you'd put maybe weight this with a three, five, seven, something like this. Okay, but it gets more complicated in here. How do you label points here? And this decision boundary becomes very uh, complicated, right? Because if you look at this, you've got a sea of black and red points all mixing. So whenever you take a new piece of data and it's sitting near this decision space, it's, it, it could be labeled black or red depending on small changes of where it sits, right? So this whole region down here is going to be very complicated for it to make a decision about what cluster it belongs to. But if you're up here, it's going to be labeled a black point. If you're down here, it's going to be labeled a red point. Okay? It's a simple thing like that. Now how does this work in practice in MATLAB? Well, uh, just like we did before, we took these two random variables, right? And what I did now is I stacked them up on top of each other. All the X points, all the Y points, so my data is in two columns. So my data has two columns, the X values, the Y values. Now the way they're labeled here right now is that, right, I, that's the number of features of this data. So each row is one of the points, but I represented it by a two-dimensional space, but I could imagine each row being a thousand dimensional or fifty dimensional, three dimensional, right? But each row is one piece of data. And each column is how you want to express that data in some kind of hierarchical way or, or uh, feature space is what we might call that. Okay? And here, since they're just two dimensional objects, it's simple to have two, you know, the X position, the Y position. That's what this is. So this is all my data. And notice what I've done is I know that the first 240 points belong to those black circles. 
I know the next 240 points belong to the red circles. So K and N search is very simple. And the way it's going to work is the following. What you're going to do is you're going to say, OK, I have all my data stacked up. And the way K and N search is the following. Let's call it index and D is equal to K and N search x. So put in your data. Uh, Here's an example of how it might work. KNN search is the .m file that you call. What you throw into it is your data matrix. Here it is. These are the labels. So the first 240 belong to one group. The next 240 belong to the other group. And now you can give it new data, some new x and y positions. And what it's going to do is take this. This is like the training data. And it's going to try it on this new data. So the new data is going to come in. And it's going to be tested against this data you gave it. And here, you can say, I want three clusters. K is three. You could put five. You could put, if you don't put anything there, it'll just look for the nearest point possible. Okay? So the default is K is one. Okay? So you give me a point. Who's my nearest neighbor? I'm going to say that that's what I am. Whoever's my neighbor, that's what I am. Okay? Here, whatever my vote is for the nearest three neighbors, that's what I am. Okay? So that's the basic algorithm. Now, what does it return? It returns you two things. It returns you an index, uh, index and a distance. So the index, it says, for instance, if this is going to basically take the new data, for all the new data, it's going to tell you which point it is nearest to. Okay? So uh, that's, that's its metric, right, is which guys am I closest to. It's going to return you, uh, out of all your data that you have here, that you trained with, it's going to say, I'm nearest one of these points in your training data. That's what it's going to return to you here, and it's going to return to you also the distance to that point. Now, when you have multiple Ks, like three, it's going to report, return to you three indices. Who are the three closest data points I'm to, and what are the distances to those three data points? Right? So that's it. So it's just basically going to say, here they are. Here's the distances, and you, since you already know what these are, then it's easy to say, oh, this is then a black point or a red point. In a simplest incarnation where you just say nearest neighbor, if you just did this, it just take the new data, and whatever index it is, let's say you ran this thing and it comes out as, you know, it's closest to point 0.100. Well, point 0.100 in this data, remember, I, the first 240 points were from the x, y variables, and the next 240 from x2, y2, so if it was in the first if it was 100, it would belong then to uh, the first grouping of points, which are those black circles. And if you wanted to know how close it was to one of those black circles, the closest one to it, d would be a vector of the distance to the nearest point given by this. So that's the basic algorithm. And again, notice the structure. And we're going to see this over and over again. You're going to give training data here. This is the labeled data. This is what you made up. And with that, you give new data to do some classification task. Okay? So again, k, na k nearest neighbors and k means sort of very you know, geometrical ways to think about data. And they actually can work out quite nicely. And they're kind of two of the uh, top 10 algorithms that people have identified, uh, the sort of workhorse algorithms that, that you can apply to generic data sets and, and, and find uh, fairly good success. Okay. We're going to actually keep building on this idea and uh, go with, uh, develop some higher end algorithms that have actually been more successful even, uh, and that will be coming up in the next couple of lectures.